I'm actually a friend of Robin's. Uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh, so Robin and I actually really have to come back to high school. Uh, I've been bugging him about coming in and talk to you guys because uh, he keeps telling me about all the cool things you guys are working on. And just looking around, it seems pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, so I'm currently a venture capitalist at uh, Northwest Venture Partners. Uh, we're located down in Colorado with an uh, office in the city as well. Uh, at Northwest, I predominantly invest in uh, consumer internet technologies. So within that, usually kind of e-commerce, uh, ad tech, uh, but we also do retail and um, you know everything in between. So anything that's direct to consumer or B two C. So we look at a lot of these new messaging apps and chat apps as well. Um, and uh, we've been doing that for about three years. But before that, uh, when I was in high school and college. I kind of took a roundabout way to getting into venture, and uh, you know, just uh, you know, I think it's important to kind of keep options open and you know try out a lot of different things as you guys go along. Um, you know, back when I was in high school, I remember I went to the, do the kind of pre-med route, science route. So went to college. Uh, did uh, I was at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire, and at Dartmouth I went in expecting to be a pre-med person, but Kind of over time, uh, you know, get weeded out with you know, Bio 101 pretty quick, and then ended up doing Econ and Computer Science there. And uh, you know, after finishing college, had no idea what I wanted to do too. So I ended up uh, going into investment banking at the time. Uh, so I was in New York for about five, six years doing investment banking. And uh, then you know, after a few years of that, I realized that that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do either. So ended up starting a company with two of my buddies from college and we started a company called Savvy Spray which was a group buying company if you guys know what Groupon or Living Social is, those kind of sites uh, this was back in 2008, 2009 and uh, our idea was a group buying site for women because if you look at a lot of those deals 80% um, or 90% of the consumers are women but a lot of the deals are targeted or marketed towards women so we just saw a real market opportunity there um, and it was pretty interesting because this was a group buying site for women that we were starting. But it was started by three guys that are completely clueless about women. So we ended up uh, you know, building a website, getting a bunch of deals. And the girl I was dating at the time looked at it and she's like, this is awful. I would never buy anything off of this website. So we had to scrap the whole thing, redesign it, build it from scratch. And uh, you know, it took us a couple years of you know, experimenting, launching different markets and everything. But uh, eventually we got going. Uh, we grew that business to about uh, eight to 10 million in annual revenue. And we ended up selling it after two and a half years to a larger company in New York. Um, and then that company ended up selling to an even larger company, uh, which is called Guild Group. I don't know if you guys have heard of Guild Group. It's kind of an online fashion retailer. Um, and then I started talking to the Guild Group guys. And then Norwest, the company I work for now, or investors in Guild Group, so that's how I kind of fell into venture. Um, and uh, within venture capital, now I spend a lot of time in e-commerce, uh, you know, product companies. We have a really cool company in New York that you guys should all check out. It's called Perky, and they kind of design products. Um, it's a crowd design uh, company, so they have a community of designers and builders. And what happens is, you know, each week. Um, Every Thursday, they look at all the products that have been proposed by the community and designed by the community, vote on the best ones, and the company will make those products go forward and they'll actually produce them and put them in Target, Walmart, you know, Home Depot, these places. So it's, uh, it's kind of a democratization of product, if you will. And uh, just looking at a lot of cool stuff you guys are building, I see a lot of really cool ideas. Uh, so within Northwest, typically invest in anything from Series A to Series D companies, which is early stage to late stage. Um, so usually it can be two guys in a garage with an idea to you know, a company with $100 million in revenue looking to go public next year. So it kind of runs a full gambit. But um, yeah, if you guys have any questions that I can answer about either you know, startups, venture capital, um, you know, trying to figure out what you want to do in high school and college, happy to help any way I can. Questions? Yeah. What is venture capital? <laughs> um, yeah, venture capital is 
providing capital for ideas. So say one of you guys comes up with a very cool idea, like you know, you have an idea for a product or a business, and you want to build it into a big company. Big company meaning, you know, a company that does over a hundred million in revenue or you know, a billion in revenue, and you want to ultimately take it public. In those situations, you'd raise capital in order to grow faster. To hire more people, to you know, do marketing, acquire customers, um, build a team, all these type of things uh, is what you do, you raise venture capital for. So, you know, we invest in companies that are fast growth that we believe that they can be big businesses, and then we work with them over you know five years, ten years, sometimes longer, and ultimately help them you know, go public and IPO in the future, and or sell to another larger company. So it kind of runs full game in companies that we invest in. They can do anything from consumer technologies to enterprise technologies, infrastructure, networking, healthcare. Um, so you know, anything that's kind of a big idea that we think is, you know, that can you know, grow into a new, uh, huge market is what we look into. So, yeah. How do you hear about small startups? Uh, it runs a full game. Um, you know, anything from in-network, we hear a lot of, uh, we hear about a lot of startups and companies from other venture investors, actually. You know, if we have companies in our portfolio that we invest in that are doing well, I'll tell some of my friends in other venture firms, so we hear that way. We hear from, you know, other developers, engineers, we get pitched a lot, a lot of inbound type requests, uh, you know, you need entrepreneurs to conferences, you know, it really kind of comes, comes from everywhere, to tell you the truth. Uh, and, you know, within that, you know, it's a pretty big funnel. So over a course of a year, I'll probably meet with a thousand companies. And then within those thousand companies, we'll meet and do a process with maybe you know, 50, 50 of those companies. And with those 50 companies, then maybe five to 10 will make it through the entire funnel. So it's pretty, it's a pretty big uh, net that we cast to look for companies, and only a few that really kind of fit the criteria that we're looking at. Um, but you know, we try to meet and help out as many entrepreneurs as possible. Anything else? What? <coughs> how, do you, how do you explain entrepreneurs to be an investment bank and a venture capitalist? So investment banks are mostly kind of uh, salesmen to a certain extent. I mean, they do a lot of different things. Um, in investment banking, there's a lot of different parts of the bank. You know, there's mergers and acquisitions. So if one company's looking to buy another company, they'll provide advice for that, or they'll run a process where they sell the company to a lot of different uh, parties um, and kind of market the company. Um, investment banks also raise capital for companies. So say I'm an entrepreneur, a big company, I want to take it into the public markets, so IPO it. Um, what you do is bankers would help take the company into a lot of different public market investors and help them raise capital from, you know, from stock uh, stock investors, that kind of thing. You know? um, venture capitalists are more on the private side, so we're super early. If you know you're a couple guys, five guys, or even less, and you're looking for money just to get your business going, that's where we come in. That's where we step in and help you, you know, provide the capital, help you guys formulate ideas, launch into market, distribute it, that kind of thing. Does so. that mean that you guys have a lot of money to invest? <laughs> yeah, that's the idea, you know. Um, and you guys are lucky because you live in kind of the center of tech and venture capital here. Um, there's a lot of money if you guys, you know, down the line are looking to do businesses. Um, you know, if you kind of want to do it here, New York, that's another big area of venture capital. And, uh, you know, and uh, it's easier to be in these locations to launch a big business than anywhere else in the world. Any other questions? Yeah. So you said you studied computer science and you also created your own startup. Do most venture companies have that kind of background? Yeah, most venture guys have the operational background as well because it's so early stage. You can't just be guys that you know the finance side. You have to be able to work with entrepreneurs. So you have to be able to you know help them from yeah. You know, I'm just looking at your site here from you know uh, the website to you know the project side to reaching different milestones, building a team. So you have to come to experience of um, all of this kind of operational things in order to really get going. Um, whereas if you're more of a later stage investor or investment banker, 
you can kind of rely on the finances, looking at the revenues, looking at how much money they have, cash, balance sheet, that kind of thing, to decide whether or not you want to invest. But uh, so much of my job is based on working on products. If I think this could be a big product that could really take off, that's when we really get that. So you have to have a little more of an operational background. Um, and but that's you know, from running your own business to being a developer, engineer, those are you guys that really do a better in the job. I mean, that's going to vary from industry to industry. Because I do consumer internet, that's kind of the industry I know, I come from. But you know, you see a lot of you know, doctors who get into healthcare venture capital or biopharmical, pharmaceutical, that kind of stuff. So it uh, really comes down to kind of sector expertise and really understanding that side of it. Yeah. What do you see as key factors that make or break the, an idea of like why you get funded? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a tough question to answer because there's so many different factors that go into it, right? Um, you know, a lot of companies that we see which have you know, great founders, really smart guys, great teams, really accomplished, they make the right decision, they launch in the right market, <coughs> they work really hard, but somehow these companies don't take off. A lot of it is still kind of nailing the market timing. You know, you look at a site like, I don't know if you guys have heard of Airbnb. It's kind of, um, you know, if you have an extra room in your apartment, then you can rent it out uh, to you know, people in through town, you can kind of become your own hotel. Um, fantastic idea. But that idea actually launched, you know, about five years ago as a site called Couchsurfing. Uh, you guys probably haven't heard about it because they're about one thousandth of the size. But, um, what Airbnb did differently was they launched at the right time. They launched three years later when there was kind of a you know, slower economy and people were willing to rent out rooms in their apartments. Um, and people needed the money, extra money. And there's things like Facebook around where people could check out, you know, people coming in so there wasn't as much kind of sketchiness involved, you know. So it's all about, you know, market timing is one. It's uh, you know, having the right team. Um, you know, and just kind of identifying things that uh, customers need. You know, you wouldn't believe it, but a lot of you know applications, companies we see are building products that are kind of neat. You know, um, you know, this is a chat app that lets you send you know funny cat videos to your friends. You know, kind of a neat idea, but you not know, a real business. It doesn't really truly solve a customer pain point. So a lot of the companies that we look for, the number one thing we try to find are. You know, consumers are truly passionate about the product. If we took this product away from the consumers, would would they be really pissed off? You know, would they would they throw a fit? If you took Uber away from San Francisco right now, everything would go nuts. You know, people would you know be crowding Muni, people would be complaining, protesting, it'd be out of control. And that's the kind of consumer adoption that you want to see before you invest. It's you know, or envision that you can see. Other questions? Uh, what do you do on a daily basis at work? So it kind of comes down to three things. Um, we see new companies, so we meet with new companies from day in and day out. And that can be early stage entrepreneurs, later stage companies. Um, probably 50% of my day is meeting new companies. Um, the other 50% is working on current companies that we're looking to invest in. So whenever we meet a company that think, we think has a lot of potential, then we start the diligence process, which means we call their customers, see what they like about the company, what they don't like, what could be better, that kind of thing. Um, we um, call industry experts to see if, you know, where they think the market's going to go. Is this a market that's going to be a lot bigger in the future? Is it going to shrink? Is Google or Apple or Amazon going to get into this space? And if that happens, then it's a red flag for us because those guys, if you try to compete with Google, a lot of times you'll lose because they have so much money. They have so many engineers working on things that they can usually uh, innovate a small startup with you know, just a few people. So um, you know, those are the type of questions you try to figure out in diligence. You try to figure out how smart the team is. You know? We call everyone from you know, college professors to you know, all the past employers, advisors for you know, our CEOs, um, our potential companies that we're looking at. So it's a lot of kind of diligence work um, before we invest in a company. 
So that probably takes up another 20% of the day. And the other 30% is just been you know, meeting, um, meeting developers, meeting designers, people in the industry that can introduce us to new startups or help us with our current companies, help us hire the right team, you know, that type of thing. Um, so it's all about kind of finding um, the right network of people that can really add value to our current companies and help them, help them grow through the next step and hopefully get acquired or um, you know, IPO more. So, but I mean, the fun thing about the job is every day is different, you know. From day to day, my calendar is totally different and keeps you on your toes. And it's fun, it's interesting. You kind of get to see the new, you know, the companies that, uh, the companies of tomorrow, you know, the next the new big technologies that are going to take place. You know, we spend a lot of time looking at uh, connected devices, which is, it looks like you guys, a lot of you guys are building these. You know, GPS, internet-enabled type services, and this is a you know sector we spend a lot of time in. So hopefully we'll see more and more kind of uh, devices that you can control through your phone and uh, within the home. So it's uh, you know, a lot of uh, really interesting things right now. Yeah. Favorite company we invest in. So we just invested in a company called Ift. I don't know if you guys have heard of them. They're a pretty early stage startup. It's called If Then This That. And the uh, the concept of If is it's a API layer or a layer that connects different services and devices. So let's say you guys have a Jawbone uh, speaker right here. Um, if I wanted that to play every time you know you sent a tweet or you posted a Facebook message or something. Link Facebook in the Java so you can do that. Or if you have another example, let's say I have a connected car. You know, let's say I'm driving a Tesla uh, around and I want it to open my garage every time I pull within a mile of my home and turn on my thermostat to you know, 50 degrees or 60 degrees or something like that. You can set this up using this company so you can connect all these different applications and services to do that. Uh, and I think that's uh, a super interesting company of ours because that's kind of our bet that everything, all these devices are going to be internet enabled in some way. They're going to need some method to talk to themselves or talk with each other. Um, and you're seeing now, even just in the past couple of months, Apple getting into space, Google getting into space, um, everything's becoming internet enabled. Uh, the car's becoming more internet enabled as well, and uh, I think that's kind of our investment thesis there, that these kind of, all these different ecosystems and devices are fragmented now, but they'll need to be able to have a way to communicate with one another. So you guys should uh, definitely check out the site, it's called if then this that, ifttt.com. Uh, you can link, you can link a lot of web services, you can link Facebook, Instagram, Dropbox, Snapchat, um, to anything physical, like light bulbs, uh, you know, video cameras, uh, you know, jawbones. Um, if you guys use Fitbits or kind of uh, health trackers, you can link those. So um, there's just a lot you can do to be creative with it as well. Are you guys thinking more um, engineering backgrounds as you guys go to college, or? Thoughts on what you guys want to do? And I think that's fine. I mean, everyone everyone switches when you go to college. Uh, the number of people that I know is doing what they're doing now and knowing that they're going to do that coming into college, <coughs> very, very rare. In fact, the only people I really knew are the people with kind of boring jobs as lawyers or, you know, that just stayed within that same field throughout the whole time. So definitely explore. And I think you guys are up to a lot of really interesting things here. Um, yeah, and the company I was talking about earlier, another cool one we were doing is Quirky. The company I was telling you about different products from week to week. Um, they're opening an office in San Francisco. You guys should go see uh, every Thursday they do a Evaluation where they evaluate all the products. You guys should definitely go send in on that because it's some really cool things that designers and engineers and their company are putting up with. Yeah. Cool. yeah, if you guys have any other questions, you know. Uh, how did you get this job? So, 
when I did my startup, we ended up selling it to a company in New York, and, which is called Guild Group. And then my current company now invested in Guild Group. So I started talking to the Guild Group guys, and then just kind of you know, met a bunch of people and um, wanted to kind of take what I'd seen on the startup side and kind of help other entrepreneurs and help other companies, that kind of thing. So um, I always kind of expected to do another startup after this, but I think it's a, it's a fun job because you get to work with so many different companies. You get to see a lot of different products. You can help out in a lot of different ways you know, throughout the life of the company rather than focusing on one product or focusing on you know one kind of sales process or you know one part of the company. So you can kind of get a bird's eye view of everything as a venture guy. What do you find yourself repeatedly advising to Sorry, say again. What do you find yourself advising to entrepreneurs? Like, what do you see as It really depends on the stage of the company. If it's an early stage company, the number one thing we tell our entrepreneurs is you have to create something that people want. You know, and that's called a product market fit. And you see this with um, you know enterprise companies because they have sales. If you're selling something to a big company and they're buying it and paying for it, there's a pretty good chance that they want it. But with consumers, it's totally different. I mean, how many apps do you guys download, you know, try once and then never go back to it again? And that's the real challenge of investing in consumer technologies is there's a lot of uncertainty between consumers. What's cool this week might not be cool next week. When uh, Snapchat first came out, we looked at it back two years ago, and every single person in our company saw so it and said, this is a feature, it's not a company. How do you build a big company on you know, self-destructing text messages? Um, so we ended up passing it. That's a big regret of ours now. But um, you know, I think that's kind of the question you, we always ask ourselves is, can you create a big business here? You know, same thing with uh, Instagram, if you guys use Instagram. Um, we saw it a few years ago, and the reaction to that was, you know, Oh, you're going to build a social network based on photo filters. You know that seems far-fetched at the time, but if you could see that this was going to be the de facto community where people were really going to exchange photos and you know base so many of their experiences on, then you know it becomes a much bigger market. So a lot of um, the companies that we look at, you kind of have to squint and kind of see how it can be big, and see the vision and the platform in the future. Later stage companies is a totally different question. It's um, you know, how do you manage a team? How do you um, create the most efficient sales process to build a big company? How do you maximize profits? You know all the kind of financial things that you know you have to make sure are you know, sustainable in the future for a big company to you know, go public down the line um, and have thousands of employees and put the infrastructure in place for that. So, I mean, it really runs full game. And also, if companies are doing really well, you know, should they sell themselves? Should they try to IPO? Or should they, um, you know, just keep going as is? Those are all kind of questions that you know, we always find ourselves asking our portfolio companies all the time. Yeah. Uh, what kind of skills are needed uh, for your job? Uh, I think the number one thing is you have to be able to really look into a company and um, you know, peel back the onion to see whether or not this is a big company, like kind of the examples I gave you with Instagram and Snapchat, or is this a company that has a lot of potential risk that we're just not seeing now, right? So one of the, the companies we invested in a couple of years was this company called Decarta, and they were creating 